So today we're gonna to be talking about the ACE CLI. This is Adonis's command line interface. And whenever we create a new Adonis project, we're actually given a number of different default ACE commands that we can utilize right out of the box. The first one you're probably going to utilize is this one in particular called node ACE serve. And this will start up your HTTP server. So this allows you to access your application within the browser by visiting localhost at the port 3333. So if we inspect this particular command here, we can digest it a little bit. So node ACE, tells node that we want to particularly communicate with the ACE CLI. And then serve is a particular command that we want to run made available via the ACE CLI. Again, also they're showing here that you can also run node ACE make controller. Again, we're communicating with the ACE CLI via node ACE, and then we're running a particular command called make controller. So if we jump into our project here, and I'm just using the terminal that's built inside of Visual Studio Code here, and if we run just node ace, what we're going to get back is a list of the available commands that we have at this point and time. Now, as we add additional packages to our application, those packages can then add and register additional ace commands within our application. In addition to that, we ourselves can also make additional commands as well. And as we were to make those commands, they would show up within this node ace list. So to run through the available commands that we have out of the box here, we have one for build, which will build out our application, converting it from TypeScript to JavaScript. And then if we have Encore, it's going to also compile the front end assets using Webpack Encore. There's a command called configure, which is what we actually use to configure additional packages that we install within our application. So those packages can include instructions on how that package needs to be added within a particular application to be used successfully. And this configure command will run those instructions and then configure that particular package within our application for us. So for example, whenever we add in Lucid, Adonis's Object Relational Mapping or ORM, Lucid comes with a number of its own commands. And in order to get those commands registered within our application, we'll want to run node ace configure and then the Lucid package to actually instruct the ace CLI to then configure Lucid within our application for us. The configure command can also add new directories and files for us as well if that particular package instructs it to do so. The REPL command will start a new REPL session. And if you're not familiar with REPL, essentially it's going to allow us to communicate with our application via the CLI. So we can get out of the ecosystem of our application and use it specifically within the CLI. So for example, we can import like a, a model, run a query off of it just to kind of inspect how particular things are going to return back data or any real reason that you might need to run a REPL session and do that. Serves the command that we talked about initially that will start up our HTTP server. Dump RC file is going to dump the contents of our donisrc.json file. Generate key is going to generate out a new app key secret within our .env file. Generate manifest is going to generate out a new ace command manifest file. So anytime that we make a new command, we'll want to run the generate manifest file to then have that command indexed within the ace command list in our application. So generate manifest is kind of a way to allow Adonis to then see what we have available. List routes is going to list out within your terminal, a table of all of the routes that you have registered within your application. And then we have a number of different make commands that allow us to create particular file types. So we can make a new command. We can make a controller, exception, listener, middleware, PLDR file, provider, validator, and view. And then we have some global flags, which is for help and to see what particular version of the ACLI you're using. And actually, if we run node ace with the help flag here, we're going to get back the list of available commands, the exact same list that we get with just running node ace. And then of course, node ace version will show our app version, our framework version, and our assembler version. So as we briefly discussed earlier on, the anatomy of an ace command is to run node ace to tell node that we're communicating with the ace CLI and then the command name. So for example, if we add in the serve command here and we run this, it's going to start up our HTTP server, which in fact it does. And since we have Webpack Encore, it will also start up Encore as well. I'm going to hold down control C to exit out of that. And now what we can also do is run node ace serve and then run the help flag to actually see what options the serve command has available. So by running help here, we're going to get a description of the command. We're going to get an example of its usage and we're going to get the flags that it has available. So we can run assets here to start our dev server for our assets. If we have Encore installed, we have a watch flag, a pull flag, a node args flag, and an Encore args flag. So the watch flag is going to then watch for file changes. And then anytime that a file change is recognized, our Adonis server will restart. 
with that change implemented so that we don't have to then stop our server and then restart it ourselves. It will just automatically happen. The pull command is very similar to watch, except for it's just going to pull for file changes instead of actively watching the file system for those changes. Uh, the node args is a way to pass in arguments to nodes specifically. And then again, Encore args is a way to do that for Encore. Next, let's take a look at one of the make commands. How about uh, make commands since we're talking about the ACE CLI here. So let's run node ACE make command and then let's run the help for it. So with this one, we can see the usage is to run make command and then provide it some form of name. This in particular would be our command name. And right down here with arguments, we can verify exactly that. This is the name of our command. Now, most of the time, whenever we're creating named items, Adonis is going to normalize it so that they kind of have the same standardization throughout our application. For example, whenever we create a post controller, Adonis will name that posts controller since it's the plural form of posts since it manages multiple posts. For models, it will be singular. It will be just post since that model represents a particular post. Should we want to bypass that, we can run the E flag or the exact flag here and it will bypass its standardization and name it whatever we provide it exactly. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute this command. So let's run node ace make command and then we need to provide it a name. So let's just call this one example since we can't really do much to integrate with our application at this point. So let's go ahead and just run that and it's going to create a new example file within our commands directory. So let's go ahead and scope that out. Okay, so you can see that we have a class here called example that extends base command. It has a static property called command name, which is set to example. So this is the actual name that we'll use to actually run this example command. We can provide a description for it. So for example, whenever we ran node ace make command with the help flag on it, we got this little description of what this particular command provided. Should we provide a description here? That's what would show up. So this is my example command description. And then there's some settings that we can set as well. So things like load app, whether we need to have our application running whenever the command runs itself and then stay alive, whether we want this command to actively stay alive and continuously run up until we exit the process. And then lastly here, we have the actual run method. And this is what actually executes whenever the command itself is run. So for example, if we were to run this command right now, what we would expect is to be logged out, hello world. However, if we check out our node ace list and I extend this up, you'll see that it's not actually listed here yet. And remember earlier, whenever I was talking about our generate manifest, that's exactly why it's not showing up yet. So let's run node ace generate manifest. Okay, so now our node ace.json file has been created. So it has our new command cached in there for us. So it now should show up within our node ace list. And here it is right here under our available commands called example. And it looks like our description's missing. Let's scope that out. Oh, I forgot to save. Okay. And so now since we've actually changed our command here, if we take a look at our ace manifest file here, you'll see, okay, so right here's our example command. We have our settings set, our command path, our command name, and the description is in here as well. So since the description's in here as well, that's now cached within this ace manifest file. And that is what Adonis is going to read from whenever it's providing us our command list. So in order for this description change to be reflected within here, we'll need to run our node ace generate manifest command again. So let's run node ace generate manifest. And then we should be able to run node ace and see our description is added within there. So that's something to keep in mind as well whenever you're creating commands yourself. So lastly here, let's go ahead and run our new command. So let's run node ace example. And you can see we get back info of hello world. And the reason why info is being provided here is if we actually take a look at our run command here, you can see on logger, we're calling the info command. So this is stating that we want to log some form of info. Within our logger, we also have available one for debug, error, uh, fatal info, just a normal old log, success, warning, and it looks like that is it in addition to info. So that kind of gives you some context as to what's happening. So if you have an error, you can log an error by calling logger.error. If you have a warning, you can use logger.warning, et cetera. So since we have info, that's why this little info is showing up. And then we have our hello world command, which we are passing it as our info message. So down the road, as we're working with this application, you know, we might run into a use case where we want to delete posts that are X months old. Uh, we could use a command to make that very easily to have happen. 
So we could make a command that integrates with our database, checking for all posts that are older than X months. And then if it finds those, go ahead and just mark those for deletion. So that's an example of what a command could be used for. At this point in time, we don't have a database integrated with our application, so they can't really show anything more than much more than logging at this point. Um, but you get the gist of it, right? Okay, so we've run through a good number of commands. Uh, we've run serve, we've run our generate manifest a couple of times, we've used a make command, we've inspected what the make command help panel looks like. Let's go ahead and take a look at list routes. Let's do node ace list routes. And what this will do is it will provide us a table of our currently registered routes. At this point in time, we only have this welcome route registered. As you can see here, we're going to be given the method of the route, the route path, how that route is being handled. So at this point, it's being used as closure. So it's provided a callback function, not particularly a controller or anything like that. It has no middleware and it does not have a registered name. So as our application grows, this will be very nifty to be able to quickly scan and see which routes you have registered within your application. And it can also be useful for debugging should you have an unregistered route or should you need to quickly grab a name of a route or see what particular middleware routes you're using. Uh, it's a very nifty command to have at your disposal. Okay, so to summarize, to run a command, you do node ace to say that you want to communicate with the ace CLI and then the command name. If you just run node ace, you'll get the list of commands. Whenever you create a command yourself, it will be added to the available commands section. And make sure to make use of the help flag to see a description of what a particular command does, what its arguments are, and what it itself accepts as a flag.